On this episode of OBD for Everyone, we're going to do a full review of OBD Lynx SX with their included OBD Wiz software, and we're going to show you what it can do and what it can't. Here is our test setup. We have our ECU connected to our transmission control module, and that's via a CAN bus, which we have wired in here. Now also, our scan tool is plugged into the same CAN bus, and this is the exact same setup you would have on your car. Now the benefit of this setup here is, well, first of all, I don't have to have my car idling forever while I record video, and also it will allow consistent testing because the amount of traffic that's going to be on the CAN bus network is going to be consistent. Now the last thing I want to point out is I've got two sensors hooked up here. This is an engine oil temperature sensor and this is an engine coolant oil temperature sensor. This will allow us to have a sensor change if we want to look at a gauge or while we are data logging. Because clearly I can't really show engine RPM if we are set up like this. Alright then, so to get started we have our OBD Link SX plugged into the vehicle's diagnostic port. The engine is in the on position, and I'm now going to plug in the USB cable to the computer. All right, we'll come up here and start OBD Wiz. So this message here is basically just a warning. The best way to, to use this is to have somebody else drive so you can concentrate fully on the laptop. So we'll say OK. Now, OBD Wiz really has five sections to it. Settings, diagnostics, monitors, dashboards, and logs. I'm just going to go over the highlights because OBD Wiz does a lot. We're currently up here in settings and we're in the connection tab. Under communication type, we have some different options here. We can say USB, Bluetooth, serial port, and Wi-Fi. What's really nice about the OBD Link SX is if we say USB, we don't have to configure a COM port like on some other OBD scanners. So that's quite nice. Um, the next thing I want to point out right here for interface and ECU, we can see how they are both red. So we're going to keep an eye on those while we come up here and touch on connect. So here we can see the interface is now green, meaning the OBD Wiz program can see the interface. And of course, now the OBD scanner can see the ECU. So we are connected and all is good. Over here, we can see our current speed. Right now we're getting about 64, 65 samples per second which is very fast. Uh, this is actually the fastest OBD scanner I have reviewed. So uh, to be honest, it's my go-to scanner when I want to do data logging because I want to get the data as fast as I can and as much as I can. This is the cable that I use for that. Next to it is the current voltage, which is 12.4 volts. And you know, for a car that would be considered a little bit low, um, this ECU I'm using right now, it's on my test bench. So it's being fed with a power supply that provides 12.4 volts. Oh, moving on, next to connection is PID monitor. So here we can set up a couple of things. Now I'm not going to go into detail, but if you want to have your OBD Link SX work quick, you want your dwell time set to zero, meaning it doesn't wait between sending commands, and we want fast polling turned on. And that's how we get the scan tool to be as fast as it can. Under here is PID setup, and here we can specify a different priority for different PIDs. For example, the engine coolant temperature doesn't really change all that quickly. So we can give it a much lower priority, a priority of 20, than something like engine RPM, which can change quickly. And that's got a priority of one. Over here is info. The most important thing on this page is right here. This tells us what protocol we are using. Now, every vehicle made for North America since 2008 and newer will be using some form of the CAN bus, the controller area network bus. And what's nice about that, generally, they run at 500,000 bits per second. So they're quick, which is great. We can get data faster. If we click on about, we can see if there's any updates or find out what version we are on there. Let's have a look at diagnostics. As soon as we click on diagnostics, it will do a scan of the engine control unit, the ECU. And we can see this vehicle here has got a lot of codes. Well, it's not really a vehicle. It's an ECU that's on my test bench. And it breaks it down into three categories, confirmed, pending, and permanent. So that's a nice organization there. As well as if we touch on a code, it will tell us a description of what that code is. 
Now, in some cases, it's still a good idea to do an online search for that code for the make and model of your vehicle. Sometimes different manufacturers use the same code, but it's not quite the same definition and you don't want to go down the wrong path trying to resolve an issue. Coming up to here, we can go to freeze frame. Now, when a trouble code is determined, for example, this P1606, there are specific sensors that are saved the instant that happens, and that's very useful for troubleshooting. Sometimes trouble codes only happen when the engine's warming up or when it's on the highway, and by capturing the freeze frame, you have that information to look at to see when does that code happen. It can be very useful in troubleshooting. Moving on to PID values. This is a live update of all of the sensors or parameter IDs or PIDs that the OBD system supports on this vehicle, on this ECU. Okay, in this case here, I believe it's 42 or 41 in total. It's a nice long list. Now, under Diagnostic Report, this is one of my favorite things about OBD Wiz. This is a beautiful six to seven page diagnostic report. So it's a beautiful summary of everything. So often what I'll do is on my vehicles, every once in a while, typically after I change the oil, I'll uh, run a diagnostic report and then I'll save it. So I have that data as time goes on. Let me show you what's all here. So we've got date and time, VIN number, model, that's fine. Here it tells us the status of our monitors. So for those that do emissions testing, we know if 2001 and newer, we're allowed to have one monitor not show as complete. So this is a table here. It shows you what monitors are available and what monitors are complete. Now again, I've got lots of no's because this is a benchtop ECU. It's, there's no sensors connected to it. Coming down here, we'll get a list of trouble codes. I've got a lot because nothing's really connected to it. And down here under this part called additional information, this is really quite helpful. If you need to know how long the check engine light's been on, well, this data right here will tell you how much distance was traveled while the malfunction indicator light or the check engine light was on and the engine runtime in minutes, which is helpful. Now, if you're looking at buying a used car, these next items are really cool. So we have the number of warm-ups since the diagnostic trouble code or the check engine light was cleared. And then we also have the distance traveled and the engine runtime. This doesn't really tell you if the engine's reliable, but if you look at it and it shows, you know, 60,000 kilometers or miles since it was last cleared, then you know no work was done recently on the engine. It's probably an indicator of this engine's running just fine, so then it should continue to run fine. If you are buying a used vehicle and it shows that, you know what, um, the distance traveled since the GTC's cleared is like 10, then you know, whoa, okay, somebody's done something on the engine, and now you can sort of try to figure out exactly what was done and if it was fixed properly. Mode one, again, this is a list of all the different PIDs that this ECU supports. This is also a list of everything we can data log or graph. Here's our freeze frame again. So we've got our P1606 and all the freeze frame data right here. Let's continue to scroll down. Mode 5 oxygen sensors. This tells us how many oxygen sensors should be on the vehicle and where they are roughly. Mode 6. So those monitors that we first were looking at at the beginning of the report, the way the system works, when the monitor is run, it's a test. And whatever happens during that test, the test results are stored here in what's called Mode 6. And it can be a gold mine, but sometimes it's very difficult to decode. For example, we can see a lot of stuff here. We'll just sort of tell us something like an EVAP monitor and then it's manufacturer defined. So we really don't know other than it was the EVAP monitor. We don't know specifically any more details about it. But in some cases we do. For example, right here, misfire cylinder one data. If this number here was quite large, we know cylinder number one is misfiring. And that can be very helpful 
when we're trying to troubleshoot a random misfire, a PO300 code. We can look here and see what numbers are higher, and that may give us a place to start to investigate where we can check the ignition coil, the spark plug, etc. Mode 9, vehicle information, and again, that's just our VIN number. Now, for anybody who has a Nissan or Infiniti vehicle, this calibration ID is shown right here. If we ignore the first letter, the 1, and we just look at what I've highlighted, that's actually your Nissan ECU ID. So if you ever are considering getting your ECU tuned, the tuner always wants to know your ECU ID. Here's an easy way to find it out. Down below here for in-performance tracking, these are just counters of how often the monitors run to completion. However, one of my favorites is this one here, ignition cycle counter. So this ECU has started the engine over 13,000 times in its life. So if you know the total vehicle mileage, and then you can divide it up by the number of times it was started, you can figure out the average duration of a trip. And again, this can be useful if you're evaluating a used car. And that's the bottom of our diagnostic report. Now I mentioned I like to save the diagnostic reports. So what I will do is I'll come up here, I'll click on export, and I'm just gonna save that on the desktop. And then right here, we have that diagnostic report. So I always have a copy of that. And then often I'll put a note with it with regards to the mileage of the vehicle. Okay, so that's the diagnostic report. Over here is a console where we can enter in OBD commands. This is a bit more advanced. It's a nice feature to have if you know what to do. Uh, really quick, if I do like an 0105, that will give us the engine coolant temperature sensor value. Um, so actually it's 42, which is hex, which is 66 in decimal, and then the formula for the engine coolant temperature sensor, you subtract 40 from the value, which leaves us with 26. So the engine coolant temperature is 26 degrees. And that's really what the program does for us in the background. So it's nice to have it here if you want to do some playing, but it's a lot easier if the program does it for you. All right, let's move on to monitors. So for the first tab here, we've already seen this. This is part of the diagnostic report, so I don't need to go over that. Now, the oxygen sensor section is a bit different here. For vehicles 2007 and older, there will be a lot of data here. And it's stuff like how long does it take to switch from lean to rich? How long does it take to switch from rich to lean? And there's a whole bunch of other stuff that's shown here. For vehicles from 2008 up, this is blank because it's no longer required. Onboard monitoring. And again, this is the Mode 6 data, which we had already seen in the diagnostic report. Vehicle information, we've already been here as well. This is also part of the diagnostic report. And we'll come down here to dashboards. We have different dashboards that are built in. To do anything, basically we just need to click on the OBDWIS program. So I'm gonna click right here, and we can see this menu comes up. So with these arrows, we can have a look at the four different new dashboards. Now, if you wanna make a change to a gauge, we click on this icon right here, and then we pick on the item we want to change, say engine RPM, and we can come down here and say we want to change that to a different sensor, we can pick what it is and then configure it as we need to. Okay, so I'll just close all that up and I'm not gonna save. And those are the dashboards. Okay, moving on to logs. So the first tab is graphing. So it's already been configured to show us the control module voltage and the input voltage read by the scan tool. So I, I want the data. So we just come up here and click on single and it will give us a single view. So as we're watching, we can see it's updating, updating, and then once we get over to, to the end here, it stops. So we sort of get this one page of data. Now, sometimes we like to have a full page of data and then have it continue. So it's always updating and always live. And for that, we just simply click on continuous. And then we'll see once we get over to 10, that it will just continue and the page will start to scroll. And it's a great way to sort of get a, a view of the sensor over time. Now, speaking of sensors, let's see how we add one. We simply come over to configure and we have a large list here of PIDs. Sometimes it's easier just to do a search like this. I know I want to add the engine coolant temperature sensor. I'll click here and click the plus. 
And now we can see it's listed here. I'll come down, click OK. Now it looks like nothing's changed here. Well, all we need to do is click on play, whether it's single or continuous. And there we can see our engine coolant temperature sensor. Now, if you notice the engine coolant temperature sensor, um, it updates slower. And that's because its priority is 20. The other sensors have a higher priority, as in a smaller number, so they update more often. Just want to sort of point that out. Okay, and we can stop that here. And this is our graphing. Let's go to strip chart. Here we can see we've got our control module voltage and our input voltage read by the scan tool. Now, if you want to make changes, we can come down and click on this icon here. And I'm going to remove the input voltage read by the scan tool. And I'm going to add engine coolant temperature. Okay, and I'll click on OK. And here we can see we have our control module voltage and now our engine coolant temperature. I'm now going to pinch the engine coolant temperature sensor, which will warm it up. And we'll see the temperature go up. So it went from 27 up to 29 degrees Celsius. Moving on to one of my favorites, data logging. So data logging allows you to record PIDs to a file. Now, I like to record in a CSV format. And that's just a very simple comma separated value format. Any spreadsheet in the world can open it. Uh, that way you have the data and you can graph it any way that you want. When I log data, I like to trigger on the PID frame, which means as soon as we have the data, we're grabbing it. However, in some cases, you want to do a fixed sample time. So if we say triggered as a fixed sample time, we could pick something like, you know what, let's say every one second we want to capture that and we can use that there. Again, for me, I like to have more data as fast as I can, so I will trigger on the PID frame. Down below here, this is the path where we are going to save our CSV file. And of course, we have our long list of all of those different PIDs. Sometimes instead of scrolling through to find them, it's just easier to do a search. So I'm going to add engine coolant temperature, click on the plus, and there it is there. Now, we are all configured. We are going to write to a CSV file and we're going to save the data as fast as possible. So every time we have a PID frame, we're going to save it. And this here is a list of what we're going to be logging. So to simply start logging, we click on record. Now, this part's a little tricky. The only way you really know you're recording is this is grayed out. It's one of those little small gotchas, but not a big deal. Say that's all the data we want to capture. So we simply come up here and we click on record again. And we can now see how this text is now black. All right, so now we have a CSV file somewhere with these three items of data. Now you may have noticed this folder just show up. So the folder is the vehicle VIN, serial number, and inside we have a CSV file. So let's open that in Excel. And right here, let's make that a little bit easier for you to see. There we are. So this is the date and time when the data log started. This is our timestamp. Um, here is our control module voltage, our first data item, our second data item, and our third data item. Now, sometimes when you first start logging, you can have a couple of zeros in there. It's just the process starting up. It doesn't always start instantly. So don't try to capture what you need the second you start the scan tool to data log. You want to sort of give a bit of extra time, five, 10 seconds. All right, so that's what a CSV file looks like in Excel or pretty much any other spreadsheet program. So from here, we can graph it, we can find lows, find highs, do whatever you need to do. We'll close that, we won't bother saving, and let's pop that behind there. And that's data logging. So coming up to stats, this is another view of the mode one data. So this is all the PIDs, the current values for trip stats. As you're driving, it will sort of grab a couple of different items like vehicle speed, mass airflow sensor. And from that, it can calculate some really neat things like your fuel economy and how much fuel you're burning. What's, what's your fuel burning rate? Um, the distance traveled, your average speed and your maximum speed. And it will be displayed here in a nice graph format. And that can be kind of nice to have. 
Next tab is Messages, and all this tells us is what time we connected to the scan tool, or if we have any error messages from the scan tool, they will also appear here. All right, we'll come back up to Settings and come back to Connection, and there's only one thing left to do. We're just going to come up here and click on Disconnect. And this concludes your tour of OBD Wiz with OBD Link SX. Now, let's have a quick look at the summary of what it can do and what it can't. It can give you 60 or more PIDs or sensor updates per second. Now, while we're talking about PID speed or sensor speed or samples per second, the speeds I get may or may not be the speeds that you get. It's really vehicle dependent. It can show you your emission monitor status, which shows you if your car will pass an upcoming emissions test. It shows you a very well organized and detailed diagnostic report. It can graph and plot live data, which can be very useful when troubleshooting. It can save live data to a CSV file that you can open and analyze in any spreadsheet program. And with 60 or more samples per second, there is no lag in the data. Now, I didn't show this, but it also has a paid option for enhanced data. This gives you almost dealer level access. This will give you access to most, if not all, of the modules on a car where you can read and clear codes and even see live data. On the other side, it can't always decode the Mode 6 descriptions and it will show up as Manufacturer Defined. Now, as I understand it, not all manufacturers provide the Mode 6 descriptions. So it may not be an OBD Wiz issue, and to be honest, this is the same as every other affordable OBD app I have seen. All right then, let's wrap up this episode. For about $56 Canadian, or about $40 US, the OBD Link SX is an excellent value. It is fast, it has a three year warranty, and the included OBD Wiz software is easy to use and feature rich. I purchased mine in November of 2018, and it is my go-to OBD scanner when I want a data log, a lot of data, fast. Oh, one last point. If you're thinking it must be old and unsupported, well, you're wrong. In 2020, the OBD Link SX had five firmware updates with the last one from October 2020. And in my two plus years of using it, I have not had a single issue with it. It just always works. Oh, actually, this is my last point. If you're thinking, I don't want to drag out a laptop to use it, or you, maybe you don't even have a laptop. Well, guess what? With a $6 on-the-go cable, you can use it with your Android phone or tablet. And actually, it's faster. Want proof? Well, watch episode 22. I'll show you how to use the OBD Link SX with the free app, OBD Link. As always, thank you for watching, and please subscribe.